Hello and welcome to Immortal Behaviour for this week. In many ways to win a game, get your team home as a halfback. He won the game with his kicking gun. Andrew kicks back and across. It has been a freakish kick by Andrew John. I thought he'd maybe retire, but oh, forgive me, Father Fry of sin. Maybe God has come to marathon. Well, hello and welcome to another Immortal Behaviour episode. Joey, great to this see you. This is the first you. one of the year? No, nah, we've already had... This is our second. Oh, OK. Yeah, we had the first one. Can't remember what we discussed in it, but... Must have been this good. <laughs> you gave some travel tips at the end. Oh, I've got some more travel tips too. Yeah. So stay on the... Po- is this a podcast it's or a, it's a YouTube? It's a YouTube, it's a podcast, it's a VOD... Nine now. Nine now, it's a vodcast, it's... It's really anything you want it to be. Beautiful. (laughs) Um, All right, this weekend of footy, I don't think I've been more excited about this Mm. in a long, long time. Um, I want to talk about, first of all, the the Roosters-Rabbitohs game um, and one man in particular, Jared Rear Hargraves. He's playing his 300th NRL game. Uh, Quite a remarkable achievement. Where does he stand for you uh, in the modern day's front rowers? Um, well, going back, say, to the early 90s, you got Lazarus and Petro, Webke, Paul Harrigan, Matt Scott, Adrian Morley. I'm probably leaving some top ones out. Um, but anyway, around that, he'd be right up there with them. And then the modern day ones, you got Josh Papalihi, Tarpany, both from Canberra, uh, Adam Fanua Blake, uh, Payne Haas, obviously. So he's right up in that group. And to play 300 ga- games as a front rower, it's an unbelievable achievement, considering how hard the game is. Mm. It's amazing, amazing effort. Yeah, what a career he's had so far. And also one of the interesting things, he's such a, he's such a competitor. Mm. Everyone, he's such a leader. Everyone sort of, you he's know. He's an animal on the field. Yeah, but then off the field, he's one of the nicest guys. Well, do you know what? I've mentioned some players there. Petro, same thing. Mm. You would not meet a nicer, quietly spoken guy. And look, he wasn't, he wasn't really like an animal or a psycho on the field. He was scary, but he didn't really go after anyone. Webke's the same, but Paul Harrigan, our spiritual leader in Newcastle, once again, would not meet a nicer guy, but then on the field was, was just Burko. Adrian Morley, same thing. I don't really know Matt Scott, but he seems like a, a lovely family man. Um, yeah, I don't know who it is in the front rowers. So they yeah. all have that in common. The Yeah, it's like a halfback, so they're all cheeky, blah, 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 pain in the asses, and then they get on the field and they're cheeky pain in the asses too. <laughs> Alan Langer, blah, blah, blah. Out of, um, out of that list that you just gave, mm. who would be the scariest to come up against? Uh, the scariest? Well, I didn't play against Payne, thank God. I didn't play against Adam Fenor Blake. He looks a bit scary. Um, Adrian Morley was scary because you get tackled and out of your corner of your eye you'd see him and then you're just like one of those cartoon characters. you just duck your neck and then whoosh, big stiff arm would go over the top. Uh, Lazarus was, he, w- he was scary just because he was so good and mm. so big and so mobile. Uh, Petro was scary if you ran anywhere near him. If I had to pick one. I'd probably say Adrian Morley is probably the scariest. Do you uh, have any memories? Any any ones in particular? Uh, yeah, a couple of times he hit me high. His target area was from the Adam's apple <laughs> to the top of the nose. <laughs> yeah. How many times did he hit me? One night it was one night he hit me in the lug, hit me in the ear, and it just I thought my ear exploded and just it it rung for like three days. You know that ringing noise. Mm, mm. It's just, he was, he was pretty scary, Moz, when he had the head on. The funny one is, if, if you YouTube, YouTube, yep, yeah, or Google, uh, Adrian Morley, Morley, Robbie Kearns, test match where he knocks Kearnsy out mm, after 12 mm. seconds. <laughs> Kearnsy charges and Moz just comes down. I shouldn't laugh, but it's, he's a great mate, Kearnsy, and hits him like that. Poor old Kearnsy, he's, he's out before he hits the ground. Yeah. Um, I reckon Adam from Newell Blake, if I was playing he'd, now. He'd be, he'd, he'd be the scary yeah, one. He'd be scary. Um, well, Freddie Rain, Jared Rear Hargraves in his top five all-time mm. roosters. What do you think about that? Do you agree? Disagree? Oh, uh, yeah, I agree for sure. I'm just off the top who would be? Who would be? Yeah, who would be in your top well, five? Well, Freddie's there. Mm. Since, well, then you go right back to Arthur Beats and, and, uh, and Ronnie Curt and those sort of players. But probably in the modern, since the mid-90s, you'd go Freddie and Minicello. Mm. 
Maybe Morley Fitzy. might be in there. Um, Fitzy, they'd all have been around there, but Jared would be in the top five for sure. Yeah, well, we Some can't player. wait to... And a lovely yeah. bloke. Every time we see him off the mm. field, he's got a smile on his face. Mm. I just love, I love the competitiveness and especially up against South too, there's, you know, he gets that little He's one of those two, he eye. can hurt you with the ball, he's got the big bumper bars. Mm. So if you didn't get your timing right, you get one of those in the throat or the cheekbone. Mm. Yuck. Don't miss those. Um, well, it's also been a pretty big week for uh, halfbacks in the NRL. We've seen a lot of them dropped. Mm. So we saw, obviously, Lachlan Ilias, we saw Jackson Hastings, uh, Sean O'Sullivan, he was at Bud Sullivan. Yeah. Um, with Aiden Caesar coming in, what did you make of? It's a it's a lot in one week to mm, to have changes. But all those players probably didn't perform to what they have in the past, and also um, I think if you look at the Dolphins, there's real competitions for positions there. Same now at Newcastle with Jack Cogger mm. uh, going for the halfback position. Uh, the Tigers have they've had no stability in the halves for the last. 10 or 15 years. Well, they've got the options now as well. With and that will aid in season. Mm. The young 5'8". Lachlan. Oh, sorry, it just skips. Anyway. Uh, Lachlan Galvin. Yeah, he, he looks a real prospect. And I like the fact that they've, they're putting an experienced half with him, mm. Aiden Caesar. Mm. It will help him out. Um, but I think it may be a byproduct of coaches under pressure. Yeah. I feel for Elias because, uh, look, he's been down on form, but his forwards aren't doing their job to give him room to move. Um, Damien Cook's also been out of form a little bit, but then once again, it's a byproduct of their fours not laying a platform and th then Cook gets out. And, but they're all down on form. Mm. Is two weeks for a halfback at the start of a season enough to really gauge? Not for whether a coach they're... under pressure. Mm. No. Not for a coach under pressure. But all those guys that have been dropped, there's competition for those positions. Mm. That's why they've been dropped. So what happens, say, at South, say, do, well, actually a few questions on this one. Do you worry that that could knock Elias' confidence as well? Or does he go back there to get confidence in New South Wales Cup? I think go back and have fun. Mm. Still work hard, but go back there and try things. Try to build your game. And that's where you, you learn your lessons on the field, by making errors. But go back there under no pressure, just go there and play and have fun. Turn up the smile, uh, smile on your face, but then continue to work hard. Go to the coach. What do you need off me? What do you need? What do I need to improve? And then work on those areas. Mm. Did you see the um, Jackson Hastings droppage coming? No. I'm not involved with the club mm. anymore because it's too hard with family commitments. Um, I thought... In my opinion, I thought Jackson deserved to start the year at halfback and Tyson Gamble. Um, but the pressure was on. They lost those two games. And especially when you lose the tight ones, it ultimately it comes back on the halfback um, when you lose those golden points. Uh, but the competition there, they're obviously going with Jack Hogger now, and there's a young guy, Will Price, mm. young Englishman. He'll be putting pressure on Tyson. So it's a must win. For all those clubs that have dropped their halfbacks, they yeah. just have to win. Yeah. Well, is, do you see that with all these changes, is there a, an issue with the development of, of yep. young halfbacks yep. from a junior junior level? For sure. And it comes back to junior coaches being ambitious, which isn't a bad thing. But I spoke before about learning your lessons on the field by make, making mistakes. Kids at 15, 14, 15, right through to 18, 19, they are structured so much. And the, the coaches only let them play with that much creativity and they've got to get through your sets and you've got to kick early and you've got to play block plays. <laughs> oh my gosh, just let them play. Now, a first grade coach or the boss of a club should go to junior coaches and say, your job is secure. We're going to judge you on how many first graders you produce, not how many competitions you mm. win. Right mm. Develop the players. This is our DNA. This is how we want our halfbacks to play. This is how we want our front rowers. This is how we want different positions, but especially halfbacks. This is our DNA of how we want our halves to play. You coach the kids to play that certain way. The overcoaching in juniors is just makes me want to vomit. Mm. Uh, but then the other one I'm a big advocate for is weight divisions in juniors where the little kids aren't playing mm. because, you know, it's, my son's now 15. He's sort of out of that sort of 
that age sort of between seven and eight and sort of 13, 14. Mm. Where the little oh, kids I've are scared it, yeah. for their life. I've seen it. You, you see some kids who develop a lot faster. They're a lot bigger bodies. Mm. And it, it is sport after all. You do have to Why do you protect... play sport when you're a kid? You want to play with your f mates. You want to be fun. It's and got to be safe. You've got to be safe, yeah. I see kids. Uh, I can't blame them. When you're playing, it's, there's kids who are 10, 11, 12 who are, you know, small. They might be 40 kilos mm. and small. Mm. They're playing these kids who are 100 kilos. Mm. Mm. And, and it's the only com combat sport, you know, boxing, UFC, That's karate, what I was going to say, this. yeah. They're weight divisions, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, because the, the, the opposite argument is, you know, we don't want body image, we don't want that, but it's it, it, when safety, oh, safety, safety has to come first before. Nathan Cleary, Cleary did a piece years ago and he was talking about when he was in Auckland when Ivan was coaching the Warriors and he said if they didn't have the weight divisions or unders and overs, mm. that's, he wouldn't have played. Mm. Mm. Oh, there's our greatest halfback yeah. at the moment yeah. saying that he wouldn't have played and yeah. would, wouldn't have got his reps up as a kid if, he, if there wasn't weight divisions. Yeah. I think it's, it's something we have to talk about, um, how we do it with extra fields and, and extra coaches and managers for the team and yeah. extra referees. You know, it's, but I think there has to be a conversation. Mm. And you know, people at Clubland who are watching this or mums and dads watching this, I'd love to, I'd love to hear what they think. Yeah, because if you've got an age group where you've got enough to make two teams, then I think you do have to. Yeah, for sure. You you, you want to have a. You I know, think it will open up. The more then, developed bodies against yeah. bigger bodies. And um, if the kids do play, the little kids who mm. are playing halfback, mm. they don't learn, learn their trade mm. because they're not going to the line and understanding depth and when to pass and when to run. Poor kids are terrified. Mm. I see it when I go watch junior footy, and mm. it's hard to watch. Mm. It's mm. really hard to yeah, watch. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. And you're doing a bit of a disservice to the big kid. Because they don't learn how to catch and mm, pass. They mm. just run over everyone. But also the other thing is that you see a lot of, not, not just not develop your skills, but you see a lot of kids who go, you know what, this, this sport's not for me because every single weekend they're just getting absolutely pummeled <laughs> and they're in pain. Oh, it's hard the, to watch. Yeah. Like, that's, and so that's then awful. you do lose and they, they go mm. to other sports and yeah. or just, you know, Yeah, so there's away, a few so. things with the halfback. Uh, the, the two main one is the overcoaching in juniors. And the weight divisions mm. and kids, and I think it's a conversation that we have to have in the game. Mm. Mm. What? Um, well, we're expanding the game. We're expanding the teams at the top, but the grassroots says less kids playing. Mm. So we've got to get them into play, and we've got to keep them in there. And then, you know, then they, when they get to 17, 18, where everyone catches up, and then it's play on. What? Um, what weight division would you have played in in the juniors? Oh, I was <laughs> tiny. I didn't grow till I was 16. So. I, when I was 15, I think I was about 40 odd kilo. Oh, yeah. Yes. And then my ass just went, <laughs> Beyonce. No, it's Kim Kardashian. Kim Ka uh, I don't know what she looks like. <laughs> Kim Kardashian? No. <laughs> she got a big ass. Yeah. It's hey, the Kim, most famous. She loves this show it's too. <laughs> it's the most famous. I thought Beyonce had the most famous dairy. No, Kim Kardashian for sure. Anyway, we're off Has topic. Has she got implants or something? Uh, I think that's quite a controversial. I think there's some arguments that... Um, oh, that Kim bird. Kardashian, yeah. It's, uh, that <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. There's, a whole, there's a whole family of them. And they do a reality TV show called Keeping Up With The Kardashians. Whole family of what Kardashians? Of Kardashians. <laughs> oh, is that her, uh, her, uh, is that her blurb? <laughs> oh. We're currently showing a photo oh, I got of, of Kim. Yeah. Our loyal fans. In a, in a, in She's a got bikini. a G-banger on. Honestly, the G-banger. Look at it. <laughs> Look. Oh. That's not real. <laughs> Honestly, it's like two kids wrestling down there. Oh. Kim, Kim Kardashian. I'll spell it out for she you. She goes to the gym with and just does power cleans and squats. <laughs> What'd you do today? Oh, squats and power cleans. Throw some lunges in. <laughs> Far out. Yeah, Kim so you Kardashian. can watch them on... Um, How do you spell yeah, it? Like, with a K. <laughs> I can't have been right. Um, all right, let's move on. Is that real? That blo well, there's a debate about it. There's a, some people are in the camp where it doing might be. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> How do we go um, to Kim Kardashian anyway? Because uh, you uh, you grew a a bit of a booty at the oh, age she, of sixteen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> 
Um, all right, South Sydney, I want to ask you about this one. Adrian Prozhenko had some breaking news today that Demetrio is looking to start Cook on the bench. Uh, what do you make of that move? His form's been down, but also it's a byproduct of his forwards not dominating at the ruck. Um, it might give a bit of a kick in the backside to Cookie, but bring him on after 25, 30 minutes and run, Cookie, run. Mm. There, was, there was a missed tackle by Cookie in Vegas late in the game on Luke Brooks, which it wasn't, um, it wasn't nice watching. Mm. Um, but they're all down. And especially the creative players, they've just got no room to move because they're forwards. One uh, missed tackle, enough to... Uh, well, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, whether he's carrying injuries... Or what's happened, but mm. there's so many stories and noises coming out of South. Just please win so you can shut it all down. I actually, would, I think everyone's got to take a deep breath about South. They went to Vegas, mm. they played Manly, and they got beat just. Mm. They were in the game. Mm. Manly came out and pretty much toweled up the Roosters. Mm. Then South play Brisbane, who I think won the comp, up there, and they, they were in the fight for 60, 65 minutes. So, look, a win on Friday, it'll shut everything up. Yeah. They need a win. Yeah. They desperately need a win. Um, what about for the Melbourne Storm? Still no sign of Cameron Munster. Mm. Um, he, we spoke to him um, post-game, and he, he spoke about <coughs> how they're not sure what it is. It's around that groin area, um, and he's you know, not able to do a, a whole lot. Because you've had, you've had groin I injuries. I had for about 18 months, two years, and it was awful. Um, I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. I couldn't put, couldn't stand and put shorts or jeans on. I had to sit down and coughing and sneezing was like a form of torture. You have no idea, and it travels sometimes in your belly, then it's on the attachment, and then it's elsewhere, and it's just, and then you feel like you're right, and then you start running, and you're like, and then for no rhyme or reason, you wake up the next one morning and just go, oh, mm. can't get up. Sitting in your car it revs it up. Um, you just feel like you got no strength. It's oh, it's the most because you you had you injury. had that groin specialist. I had about four operations, yeah. and Dr. Neil Halpin, who was a genius, he operated on uh, on my groins, same as Freddie's, the same as pretty much everyone. Mm. The last 20, 25 years, um, but a lady from Cronulla called Kay McPherson, who's an osteo and has got elbows of titanium. She got me back on the field, along with Neil, with, but she, she was with her rehab. So I how, reckon long, how long? I reckon I've sent 12 to 15 players to Kay mm. with groins, and she fixed them all. Mm. So but I've how long? Them, I went and saw Munster. I said, mate, I spoke to the doctor, Melbourne's doctor and the physio. I said, look, here's this lady. I'm not standing on anyone's toes, but this lady is the best. What did he say? So, I, well, I haven't really spoke to Munster. Whether he's, he's contacted Kay, she lives in Cronulla. But... Um, the, I, I can't say it's going to be a month or it's going to be two months or it's going to be six months. You just don't know. Yeah. And whether he's back run, running. He's monster, not, well, that's the, the belief. What's reported is that he's not running. Well, he's not running, so his speed's going to be down. He won't be able to be lifting in the gym. No power weights, no, like Kim, our Kim. No <laughs> squatting, no power cleaning. Um, and all that's related, power work in the gym and then you transfer it on the field and you're doing speed work, repeat speed, just to keep that speed and power going. If he's not doing anything like that, it's, it's going to be so tough for him. And he's at that age, he's 30. Mm. And yeah, Munster being Munster, I was mm. in the sheds and I was talking to him about it and he was skylarking a bit. I said, mate, this will finish you. Mm. If you don't get this right, this will finish you. And he went... Mm. I think he realises how serious it is. Because it is a, it's something that can come, it can go, just come and go, rare come and go for no rhyme or reason. Mm. And you're doing your rehab, everything's the same, and then one morning you wake up and it's back. So how how um, dangerous is that then for State of Origin? Mm. If you're Billy, looking at your team, and you know someone's got a groin injury that they're yeah. struggling with, who do you have maybe waiting in the wings. I remember it's a few Origin series where I was going in around the late 90s, late 90s, maybe in 2000, where I just said, I can't train. Mm. I'll be right to play, but I can't train because of my groins. Mm. And they're like, mate, you got to train. I'm like, if I train, I can't play. So I missed a couple of series, sort of half a dozen games maybe around that period. But I remember Freddie had all sorts of dramas with his also. It's just a horrible injury. Horrible, ho horrible injury. Who um who replaces Munster's origin if you can't play well, them? Well, the spine is obviously the 
Harry Grant and um, Ben Hunt around the dummy half. You got DCE, and then at fullback you got Reese Walsh from Kalen. So I think Kalen would go to five eight. Mm. <gasps> DCE, Kalen, Reese Walsh, Harry. Is it making you nervous? Is anyone? <laughs> I need to breathe in a bag. <gasps> Jeez, that's, that's, that's a, a team. That's a, yeah. yeah. So I think Kalen. If, if Munster's not there, I think Kalen mm. plays 5 eight. Well, hopefully for Munster, um, it's not... He can maybe go and get some specialists mm. to help him recover. Yeah. Uh, but certainly concerned. Um, all right, we've had seen some reports... Um, some reports on Benji Marshall about his work-life balance. So Benji has said he is in at training every single day before any of the players are, um, does the whole day, and then he has family time in the evening, and he has copped criticism for that. Is that wild? It's just absolutely ridiculous. If you look at a game, you look at it once, especially with Benji, he's understands this, the game so well. But not only that, he's, he's, he can delegate. He's got assistants. You're an attack coach, you're a defence coach. Look at this, look at that. And then he'd look at it and he'd pick things up. If you watch a game two, three, four times, nothing changes. Mm. I just think it's it's a beat up. You might have to choose his words a little bit better, Benj. To, to not say that you're a... But look, he got to... He, he was a champion, an absolute champion of our game. He didn't get there from cutting corners mm. as a player. Mm. He did it from when he was a kid. He'd worked so hard on his game and playing touch footy and this sort of thing. And he would have put that over on his coaching side mm. of things. I think it's just a, it's a bit of a beat-up, really. Yeah, do you think players need to see the, the fact that when they arrive at training and when they leave, that the coach is no. there before them? No. Doesn't doesn't even register? No. no, couldn't care less. That's in my own view. Couldn't care less. Do you think it's going to be a tough uh, year for Benji yep. with a lot of agendas and a lot of rumours and just speculation? It seems like the Tigers are just that sort of club. It just, it's just, mm. it's just I, a soap opera. I've, he handled himself very well. He came out and oh, he's actually... He's a good guy, Benji. He's a good guy. Cleared. He handles it well and he's smart. But at the moment, especially in the key positions, we spoke about halfbacks. There's no real halfbacks. I've seen one or two in lower grades coming through um, I don't really want to mention their names but you know I go watch the lower grades there's no one really where you go well, you'll play for Australia mm. where 20 30 years ago you go watch lower grades you go wow yes. him him that guy there'd be four or five of them you mm. say he'll be an NRL role player he'll play for Australia where at the moment for some reason we haven't got him coming through mm. um, Big game on Sunday, Eels Seagulls. Mm. Um, we'll be heading out there after Sunday footy show. Thoughts on this one? This is oh, a this wait. is an almighty clash. So all our games this weekend on nine live and free. Tonight, uh, sell out. Blue bet. Tomorrow night, Allianz. They could probably get one hundred and fifty thousand there. Rooster South, and then Combank Sunday it's sell out. I think they'll all be absolute cracking games. Um, tomorrow night, I can't wait for the Roosters South. But from a, a footy point of view, this will be the game of the weekend. Eels um, going a lot better than I thought they would. I love their style of play. They attack different to other teams. They offload the ball. They move the ball. Uh, where Seagulls, wow, they uh, they look fit and focused and happy. How do the two spines combine? Um, or compare? Well, we got them here. They? They're, they're, they're pretty similar, really. I've got to say, I, I think Manly's spine of Tom, Luke Brooks, Cherry Evans and Lachlan Croker would be up there with the best in the comp. I, I think probably Brisbane's with Bruce Walsh and Ezra and Reynolds, Billy Walters, but, geez, that's the Manly spines. It's right up there. And the, I think the big thing about the Parramatta spine, in particular Gutherson, Brown and Moses, they've probably played over 100 games together. Mm. So they don't know each other's game. I think Dylan Brown's in for a big year, he needs to aim up um, more than he did last year. There's a few dramas for Dylan off the field. But I, if I had to pick one, I'd say uh, Manly Just. Mm -hmm. The turbo, far out. Who has the better kicking game, Mitch Moses or DCE? Six half dozen the other. Um, long kicking game, maybe Moses, he's got that sweet strike. Cherry Evans nails those 40-20s. Yeah, they pretty much cancel each other out. But if I had to pick one, I'd probably go Moses by a, 
the bees. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Well, last week as well, we um, finished off with some travel tips. Yes. So we've got two more tips that you're going to give to our viewers. Yeah. So we want um, any more travel tips. So one more travel tip that you've got. Last week you said um, take your pillow if you're flying domestically and have a drink um, at any time if you're flying internationally. Yeah, I get international. I get there sometimes five hours before I fly. <laughs> Because there's no time. You can yeah. do what you want. It's like Las Vegas. And there's no, watching, there's no I clocks. I don't go to the lounges. I like sitting at the bar and just watching everyone go past and just, you know, you're excited. You're just chipping your teeth on them. You're drinking them that quick. But do it responsibly, kids. Make sure you're, make over, sure you're able make sure to you're over, board the plane. Make sure you're over 13. <laughs> um, so what's your last travel tip? Get get in the, um, the exit row. So you get in early yeah. and you can pick it online. Mm. I actually worked out how to do that. It's a miracle. And then if you're traveling with your better half, take a big blanket so you can have some cuddles <laughs> while the plane's going. How does, what does Kate think about that? No, she doesn't. <laughs> Just, when you pack the blanket in the <laughs> No, she goes drink for drink for me. So when she gets on the plane, <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't drink, so it doesn't count. Um, get and a big then blanket. get a big blanket. Okay, big big do, even a doona. Take a doona. A doona. <laughs> There's nothing worse when you get on a plane and you're going somewhere like you're going to the tropics, you're going surfing somewhere like Fiji or somewhere, and you think you're going to 32 degrees. Yeah, so and you're wearing you, a t-shirt and shorts, yeah, and, and then you get it's, on the plane, and, and it's, it's so cold. You got icicles coming. I um I had that going over to Bali last year. We were you know shorts and a t-shirt because we were going to 35 degrees, and um, it was so cold on the plane. I asked for a blanket, and you know they said yeah forty dollars, forty dollars for a blanket. Take your own blanket. Take a doona. <laughs> there you go. You save yourself some Have you cash. Ever seen, I saw it recently. I don't know. It was from Melbourne, a plane had to turn around and go into Melbourne. I see. Some chick was carrying on or something. Have you I ever been that. on there and someone's played N- up? Never, no. never, never. Yeah, I, I just wonder what you do. You're halfway to Bali. How annoyed would you be? Someone's carrying on like a peanut. And you have to turn around. They were mid-air and they had to turn around and come back. Would you, would you just tackle them? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, not with my neck or body. <laughs> well, is there... Is there um, what are they called? Air marshals? Not in, in not in Australia. Because on that movie, Brides, that Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. Yeah. <laughs> Air Marshal. What's his name? Air Marshal. Um, oh, it's very good. That's a good show. It's a good movie. Yeah. And then what's her name in it? She gets full of the sleepers and gets on the drink <laughs> and she loses she's, it. And she's, she, what does she say? She's like... <laughs> <laughs> she goes up the first I'm, class. Yeah. <laughs> Ready to party. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, your last um, your last tip. So you're solo parenting at the moment. Yes. Do you have any good tips for anyone out there who's solo parenting? Um, get the mother-in-law up. My mother-in-law's a cracker. She's so good. <laughs> so good. Do you have any good um, stories? No, not really. It's just She's... been... Yeah, I've been a really good boy. I don't <laughs> want to go, go down to the pub at lunchtime and come home <laughs> in all sorts. Your mother-in-law's going, what is going on with your head? Does she, um, what is she? She has a drink, she has a red wine. Yeah? Yeah. You sit and watch the footy together? Well, she's surprised that I do all the cooking. She's been very impressed with the cooking of the eighth. Yeah. Mexican, pork ribs, yeah, stir fries, fish. She won't ever want to leave. Yeah. There you go. Be good to the mother-in-law, gents. Yes, all right. And ladies. Yeah. Um, be good to the in-laws. That's, there you go. Um, all right, that's all we have time for for this week's episode of Immortal Behaviour. Joey's about to go off and do some Googling of Kim Kardashian. Yes. And um, we'll... Is her um, old man a... Uh, <laughs> is her old man... Did he... Did he <laughs> no, no, no. Um, her stepfather was a decathlete. That's right. Yes. What's his name? Uh, his name now is. <laughs> that's right. It's all coming to me now. So right, hang on. Her, her dad is OJ's lawyer. Was. Was, yeah. Trustworthy. Yes. Does not tell Porkies at all. And Caitlyn Jenner is her stepfather. The, yeah. Kardashians. Yes. All right. I'm going to Google. We'll see you, we'll see you next week. See ya. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop. For all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get them on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. 
Grab a seat on the couch for that. And of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Ain. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm. Subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.